Welcome to the Wellness Enclave with Dr. Sewell. The Wellness Enclave will explore emotional health and its impact on everyday life. In the Enclave, we will address how emotional health is connected to other parts of your life, such as physical health, relationships, spirituality, and even decision making. Our goal in the Wellness Enclave is to help you become a healthier, happier you through motivation, education, and innovation. And now, the Wellness Enclave with Dr. Sewell. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Wellness Enclave with Dr. Donna Sewell, where health and wellness is our top priority. Today, we will be talking about the topic of anxiety, Um, and I know uh, I have been discussing a lot of, uh, I know last week, I think it was, I was discussing holiday stress. I just want to talk about overall anxiety because a lot of times as we come to the close of the year, we begin experiencing a lot of different things. Even in terms of preparation for the next year, we become very anxious because we start thinking about goals and, and, and things that we have to accomplish, finances that we're concerned about, so on and so forth. So I think this is a very important topic. So again, today we'll be talking about anxiety and we will be right back in the enclave after this commercial break. Hi there, healthy people. Do you have a healthy product or service? If you are a certified medical professional, fitness trainer, author, or chef, Old Fashioned Health would love to promote your services or product on the Old Fashioned Health radio show. Please reach out to us. Call 404-793-3960 or email us at oldfashionedhealth at gmail.com. You can also contact us at oldfashionedhealth.com. Old Fashioned Health, good health inside and out. Right. Welcome back, everyone, to the Wellness Enclave with Dr. Donna Sewell, where we will be talking about anxiety today. So what I want to do today is talk about symptoms of anxiety, causes of anxiety, and then try to provide some type of uh, resolutions. Now, I'm just going to talk about overall anxiety. There are a few types. We discussed post-traumatic stress disorder on, um, well, a few weeks ago. And um, PTSD is actually a type of anxiety um, disorder. There are also some other uh, pieces like agoraphobia uh, that's, that's pretty much uh, difficulty or fear of being around people in, in large crowds. Um, and, and there is obsessive compulsive disorder, panic disorder. There are several types of disorders that fall up under or diagnoses that fall up under anxiety. So today, because I don't want to get into all of that, uh, I think it's a little bit too technical. I just want to talk about just some overall symptoms. Now, all of us, uh, 
experience anxiety at some point. And, and so that's no big that, that's not a big deal. Uh, anxiety can come about particularly when we don't when we don't know what's coming or basically fear of the unknown um, situations where maybe we have to get up and speak in front of, of individuals, um, things of that nature. That, that's kind of when anxiety occurs. Sometimes it could be because your life you're, you, you have a huge life-changing event such as divorce and you may be thinking about, wow, what, you know, what am I going to do now? Who's going to, how am I going to, how, how is it, how is this going to work with the children? How is this going to work with my finances? Uh, there, there are various reasons in, in, there are various reasons that people deal with uh, anxiety. However, anxiety can become very problematic or it is problematic when it is disrupting your lifestyle. When, when your anxiety gets to the point where it is disruptive to your everyday living, then that is problematic, and that is when you need to go and seek help. Now, one of the things I will say before I get into the, the symptoms is, is this. If you are experiencing anxiety and you feel like it, it is disrupting your life, one of the things that I would do even before I go to the doctor's office, whether, it, whether you're going to seek mental health or you're going to a, a medical doctor, one of the things that I would do is kind of trace back when that anxiety began to uh, happen. When did it happen? Because sometimes, believe it or not, anxiety might be linked to medications. Sometimes it's a side effect of the medication, you know, feeling feeling restless, always feeling like something is going to happen, feeling worried. Sometimes that is a side effect of the medication. So always trace it back to when it started, uh, to, to when you started experiencing a certain level of anxiety. So, Now, we are going to get into the symptoms, and because I am doing, I don't have a guest in the studio, as Mr. Greg knows, the engineer, I might be calling on him for a question, or if you want to engage in a conversation, feel free to do so, sir. Okay, so one of the symptoms, and I am getting this off of Healthline, so is excessive worrying. That's a common symptom uh, of anxiety. Worrying. Now, what can trigger us to worry? I just gave a number of things, but here's one of the things that I did not mention. The news. The news, you probably need to turn it off. For those of you who are news junkies, if you watch the news long enough, it, believe it or not, can cause you a level of anxiety. Okay? One of the things I always recommend, and I I think I've recommended this before when I was talking about stress, is when you get up in the morning, try to find something that's relaxing for you to do. But also, if you turn the news on, don't let the news be the first thing that you see in the morning. And also, don't let it be the last thing that you see before you go to bed. So what I would do is get up, do something relaxing, then maybe turn on the news, go to work or whatever your routine is. In the evening, if you watch the 6 o'clock news and you get into bed at 1030, there's no reason for you to watch the 10 p.m. news unless something major is going on. Most of the time, the news does not change too much between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. The problem with the news is this, and this is why it causes stress. First of all, when you watch local news, I do a lot of traveling. When you, when you watch local news, especially in larger cities, the first five to seven minutes is talking about nothing but murder and robbery. Am I correct on that, Mr. Greg? I I would agree. Okay. I have an issue watching the local news as well. It's so it's so random. Mm -hmm. And there's no connection to the stories. Mm -hmm. Like the first story would be about a tornado. And then the next one is about uh, someone in the neighborhood found their dog. Right. That'll be the the immediately (laughs) next story. So it's so random. And right. It's like no kind of new. If that can stress someone out, it's like I don't know what to think anymore. <laughs> right. And it's and it's always something and that's that's interesting you brought that up, especially with the um you know, it could be tornadoes, wildfires. So that that's something that's stressful because you're looking at destruction of, of somebody else and then you're right, somebody finds a dog. So you you're kind of like, Okay, where does that tie into everything? In addition to that, when we watch national news, if you look at at uh, MSNBC, CNN, Fox, you know, I'm, I'm not discriminatory. If you want to watch Fox News, feel free. But when you look at those things, 
also you're looking at national you're looking at things on a national scale and sometimes international and again is destruction or either the leadership in the various countries including the United States they are developing policies or not developing policies or saying things that are extremely random and and disconcerting and it causes stress because you're looking at what is my life going to be in the next year? What's going to happen to my kids? It's a number of things. So please, if you look at the news at night, do not let that be the last thing that you see. So because it, it can it can cause a lot of worrying and it can also have a negative impact in the sense of let's go back to the local news. If Every time I turn on the television, I am seeing someone being murdered, robbed, carjacked. Then you know what? That can put that can instill a sense of fear in me and I may not want I may get to the point where I don't even like to leave the house. So it can it can have it can have a negative impact or a negative effect. So here's the thing and worry is common but if it's excessive worrying about daily matters then that's a possibility you may be dealing with a disorder particularly if it persists for almost daily for about 6 months. If it persists almost daily excessive worrying for about 6 months um, is that could be signs. It doesn't mean you do have an anxiety disorder, but it could be signs of, a, a, of an anxiety disorder. Um, feeling agitated. Usually when someone is feeling um, anxious, it kind of kicks off a cascades of effects throughout, throughout the body. It can cause racing pulse, sweaty palms, shaky hands, dry mouth, all of those things. Again, because of that, you may be a little agitated agitated and feeling on edge and irritable. If you have a rapid heartbeat, sweating, shaking, and dry mouth, and, and this, is an experience, this experience is a type of arousal for extended periods of time, then it's a possibility that you may have um, an anxiety disorder. Now, let me, let me go back to that for a minute when I start talking about feeling sweaty. There are a lot of people who actually have anxiety attacks. They have panic attacks. What those panic attacks look like is is this for a lot of people. Sometimes um, they sweaty palms, rapid heart, rapid heartbeat, just like I just like I just mentioned. When rapid heartbeat, uh, a lot of times they feel like their body they can't move. Their body feels heavy. They can't move. They're they're doing a lot of um, sweating. They really don't have a sense of where they are. It's it's a sense of panic, and a lot of times they, people feel like they're having a heart attack actually, and they go to the emergency room. If these are things that are happening to you on a regular basis, then it's a possibility you have a, di- you, you have a disorder. You can have a panic attack and not have a disorder because you can be placed in a stressful situation that will actually just cause you to have a, a panic attack. And, it, and it's, that's a normal reaction. But if this continues to happen over and over again, again, those are signs of a possible um, disorder, anxiety disorder, and you may need to go get checked for that. Restlessness is another uh, sign of, of anxiety. Again, if this occurs frequently, then a, it's a possibility you may have a disorder. The fourth one before we go on break is fatigue. Believe it or not, fatigue can be a sign of anxiety disorder uh, if it's accompanied by excessive worrying. It can also uh, indicate as well that you may have some signs of depression. All right. Thank you for listening to Dr. Sewell and the Enclave. We are about to go to commercial break, but we'll be right back. And when we return, we will be talking about or continuing on the topic of anxiety. If you love it, your favorite music, news, talk, sports, and you want to hear it, it's in the palm of your hand. Text IHR to 45495 to download the app or listen at iHeartRadio.com. Standard text and data rates apply.
right, everyone. Welcome back to The Enclave with Dr. Donna Sewell, where we are talking about anxiety. And again, I am just giving you some overall, uh, I'm just talking about anxiety in general. Um, We're talking a little bit about the symptoms. A lot of these symptoms I'm pulling off of Healthline, uh, healthline healthline.com. And after we finish talking about the symptoms, then I'll give you a few ways that you can, especially when I talked about panic attacks before break, I'll talk to you about how you can cope with anxiety and how you can uh, cope with panic attacks if you've been experiencing those things. So we left off on fatigue, I believe it was. So another symptom of um, anxiety is difficulty concentrating. A lot of times when we're really worried about things or or we are dealing with anxiety, we have difficulty focusing on what we're supposed to be doing. So an example of that would be if I'm supposed to be writing a report for school, some type of dissertation or thesis or something of that nature, if my constant, if my focus or my worry or my anxiety is dealing with another issue, then it's very difficult for me to focus on that task at hand. And keep in mind, if you're experiencing these things, it does not mean necessarily that you have a disorder. These are just symptoms. In many instances, you need to have about four or five of these running for an, ex- an, uh, an extensive period of time before you look at it and say, hey, I may have a problem and I may need to go to a, a doctor. So irritability, that is another irritability. That is another uh, symptom of, of anxiety as well. Most people with generalized anxiety disorder, they feel uh, they report feeling high, highly irritable, Um, especially when their anxiety is at its peak. And again, that stands to reason because, again, remember, you have all of these different thoughts that are going through your mind. Your body is reacting to it a particular way. So you're automatically feeling on edge. Think about if you've ever been a person who um, was in a situation where you you were about to get into a physical altercation with someone and the adrenaline was running or think about if you've been in a car accident and you came out of it okay but you were still kind of nervous and kind of panicky. Think about those things that are going through your body and, and how that adrenaline feels or how your body is reacting to that level of anxiety. Think about those things and if you think about that it stands to reason that a person would be highly irritated or agitated if they're dealing with anxiety because your body is reacting in that type of manner. Uh, your muscles can tense up. That is the that is another sign or symptom of anxiety. And this is a big one, trouble falling or staying asleep. Trouble falling or staying asleep. Now, some of us pretty much have bad sleep habits. And I'm going to raise my hand. You can't see me, but I, I'm raising my hand. I have tremendously bad sleep habits. Um And so sometimes it's just bad, poor sleep habits. But if I am worried about something, it is very difficult for me to fall asleep, particularly if I'm having racing thoughts. Sometimes I'm worried about things, and and I'm just using myself as an example. Sometimes I may be worried about things, and I don't even know what I'm worried about, but my mind is just racing. It may be I have to do this tomorrow, I have to do this next week. What am I going to do next week? Uh, What am I going to do to um, uh, next year? This needs to be done. That needs to be done. And so my mind is constantly moving. If I'm worried about something specifically, let's say I may have a health issue or something like that, then naturally I am going to be focused on that. And so with that being stated, then when I lie down and there's no more stimuli around me to keep me busy and to keep my mind busy, then my mind is going to fall on what I am concerned about. And it makes it very hard to fall asleep or it makes it very hard to remain asleep because I may jump up in the middle of the night. Have you had any experiences like that, Mr. Greg? All the time. (laughs) All the time? Yeah. Okay. Um, Sometimes I'll just, uh, I I have the, a little bit of anxiety to where I feel like I I wake up and I feel like I'm going to be late for something. Mm -hmm. And then I realize, oh, I don't have to get up for four hours. Right. Right. Uh, But then... I feel like I'm so alert that I feel, oh, well, maybe I should. I don't know what I should do to try to get myself to get back to sleep. But, right. um, yeah, so, I so have terrible habits. One of, <laughs> one of the things they recommend to try to go back to sleep, and I know I talked about this on a, on a, on a previous show, is that 
Um, and I know this is getting a little bit off topic, but one of the things they recommend is not to get up because this is something that I think most of us have a tendency to do that have difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep. If we can't go to sleep, then for time management sake or productivity, we say, okay, I can't go to sleep, so let me just get up and go do something productive since I can't go to sleep. What that does is that increases your, your metabolism, which in turn increases your energy because you're moving around, so it makes it more difficult for you to fall asleep. So the recommendation then is that you get up. when If, if you lie in bed over, say, 15 minutes and you're unable to return to sleep, normally I would say a half an hour, but researchers say generally around 15, 20 minutes or something like that, then it's recommended that you get up and you go into a dark room and you sit up and you do nothing until you get tired again and then you go back to bed. The rationale behind that is if you lie in bed and you have difficulty falling asleep, then you'll init- then you will at some point begin to associate sleeplessness with lying in bed or the bedroom. So that's the rationale behind that. So the the uh, another symptom is panic attacks, and we talked about we talked about panic attacks uh, a little bit before break avoiding social situations that is another um, sign of that could be another sign of dealing with some anxiety is depending on why you're avoiding the social situation if it's a situation where you're constantly feeling like you're being scrutinized by others judged you're you kind of don't just you feel uncomfortable around people or you feel like you're socially awkward and you have fear of being embarrassed if these are fears and they have no there is no reason for that. Like nothing has happened for you to feel like people are going to be talking about you or gossiping, gossiping about you or scrutinizing you. Then that's something that you may need to look at because it may be a possibility that you have uh, some uh, some anxiety or you may have uh, some type of disorder. And the the last one is irrational fears, which may be a sign that you may have an anxiety disorder. So the irrational fears fall into the phobias, like the situational Phobias like being in an airplane on an elevator, uh, blood injection, injury phobias when nothing is ne- ever when nothing has never happened to you, those types of things. So that's what they're talking about when they talk about phobias. So let's get into how you can, if you're just dealing with basic anxiety, just something that all of us deal with periodically and throughout life then let's talk about some ways that you can deal with that. Uh, One of the things about being unable to sleep and when you're unable to sleep because you're the person who is constantly thinking about what you need to do, which I admit I I am like that. I am constantly doing goal setting in my head all day, all night, all types of things. So one of the things that helps with that or that I recommend is set set your plan, almost have like a weekly planner. So generally what happens is what I tell people is to write everything down. So what that means is this. I write my schedule out for the week or put it in your phone, however you need to do it. Whatever you need to do, put it in your phone, put it on a, on a daily planner. I'm old school, so I like it in, 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 on pen and paper as well. And then what you do is anytime you know that you have to do something, like if I know today that I have an event or I have something to do three weeks from now or work project due, then I automatically just put it in my calendar when it's due three weeks from there. And and then I put in my calendar when I need to start working on it. Now, let me tell you what this does and how this kind of alleviates some of the anxiety. Part of the anxiety that you have at night is that you're going to forget something. That's part of the anxiety that a lot of us have. It's like, oh, I I have to remember this. I can't forget that. So you know what? If you have it written down, then then guess what? That alleviates some of that anxiety because you know, or it's in your phone because you know your phone is going to alert you. Now, this is what you do at the planner. Every morning you get up, you look at the planner and see what you have to do during the day. And then you don't look at it again until maybe about two hours before you get ready to go to bed, not right before you go to bed. So then you look at it before you go to bed and or, or about, I'm sorry, about two hours before you go to bed to see what you have to do the next day to make sure you have everything written out. During the day when you're going down your checklist, that's just what that planner is set up for. So then you don't, you're not worried at night about, did I do this? Did I not do that? Did I not do this? Because you know what? During the day where you have your activities listed, you're checking off on those activities. So again, that alleviates some of that type of 
worrying. And also what I tell people is when you write those events down in your calendar, prioritize, because you know what? We prioritize everything in the United States. Everything to us is a priority and it's really not. And the first way to prioritize that I tell people is this, is somebody going to die from this if it does not get done today? And most of the time the answer is a resounding what? No. No. (laughs) It's a resounding no. Is this going to cause a health issue? Most of the time it's a resounding no. So prioritize accordingly. Prioritize uh, prioritize accordingly. So sometimes that alleviates some of that anxiety or some of that worry if you're the type of person that always has racing thoughts about what you need to do and when you need to do it. Another thing that helps always is to exercise. Exercise, exercise, exercise. Exercise about 30, 45 minutes, about three, not three, but four Four days out of the week, at least four days out of the week. Take take time, whether it's going to walk or whatever. When you exercise, even people I know that hate to exercise, if they go walking or they're, they're on the treadmill or whatever they choose to do, yoga, whatever they choose to do, they always say they feel better. Even though they hate to do it, they always say they feel better. It clears their mind out. It gets some of that energy out, some of that worry, those types of things. So that's another piece right there. Actually going to sleep and having good sleep hygiene habits actually works for you because guess what? When I am unable or when you don't get enough sleep, you are generally agitated, more on edge, more you, you're worried about things, and you have difficulty concentrating. Is that correct, Mr. Greg? Certainly. <laughs> okay. So let's practice getting. I talked about that one time, and you can go online and find those, but, but practice good hygiene habits. Caffeine. Please, please do not drink a lot of caffeine. That can cause a lot of anxiety, believe it or not. Look at how much your caffeine intake is. And panic attacks. I want to talk about that before I leave because I'm down to like 30 seconds. So the panic attacks. Do deep breathing. When you find those, when you find that you're in the middle of having a panic attack or, or right before it hits, what I need for you to do is take really deep breaths and focus on something else. Take really deep breaths, focus on something else. If you're a person that has panic attacks on a regular basis, then after you have that panic attack, if it's not going to cause panic, go back and look at what was doing, what you were doing beforehand, because you may see a theme in there. So once you find out what's causing those attacks, that'll allow you to to, uh, determine what's causing them. And then you can eliminate that or curtail whatever that person or that situation is, which will reduce um, the which will reduce the chances of you having that panic attack. Also, keep in mind, keep a positive scripture song or something in your mind that you can concentrate on when you start feeling that panic attack come along. So also start doing that, and it kind of helps out as well. Thank you for listening to me, Dr. Donna Sewell in the Wellness Enclave. Today we have been talking about anxiety. And as always, I hope you have a fantastic day and a happy and healthy week. Please, please, please be safe out there for the holidays, and I will talk to you on next week. This has been the Wellness Enclave with Dr. Sewell. Join us each Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. on WWWE, The Real 1100 a.m. We look forward to growing with you. Thank you for listening to another Old Fashioned Health Network show on The Real 1100.